Let's talk about 2020. 2020 overall, I think everyone can agree. Shitty year. However, the one light spot that I genuinely had in 2020 was reading. If I'm being completely honest, it was pretty much the only thing that I had to like look forward to all year long and books were just a way for me to like check out of everything that has gone on this year and just enjoy myself for a little reprieve. I've read more books I think this year than I have in my entire life almost and genuinely each and every one of them for the most part I think I only really ever had like three or four duds this whole year which is huge. I want to break down my top 10 favorites and the 10 books that really truly made this year just a little bit better in uh, they were like the light amongst the shit basically. I'm gonna go from 10 to number one so we're counting backwards so at number 10 is going to be The Toll by Neil Shusterman. So here's the thing with this book. This is my least favorite book in the Ark of the Scythe series, however, this series is one of my complete favorites. So this book I still absolutely love, just in within the three books, this is my least favorite of the three. It was a great finale, I loved seeing Citra and Rowan's characters come to an end. The one thing with this book, it did take me quite a bit to get into, and this is one of the earlier books that I read this year, because there are so many different perspectives going on in this book, way more than in the first two, and you don't know how they're all going to line up, which is fun, but it also is a little confusing at the beginning, so I will say that this one was a little trickier to get into than the other two, but then seeing it all come together, it was so well done. The character development over just the three books was incredible. All of the ends that had to be tied up were insane. The vi the villains, I'll say like Goddard, I loved seeing his story come to an end. Like there was just so many great things in this series and I do think that it's kind of underappreciated. So I did just want to shout this whole series out that if you haven't checked this out yet, definitely do. It's more on the YA in terms of romance that I have on this list. I think every other book is way more. Spicy. The concept is super cool and I'm really sad that it's over but I thought this was going to be getting made into a TV show or a movie series. I haven't heard anything more on that but if it does I'll be very excited to see this because I think this series is just fantastic and I love seeing it come to an end. So I have a duet next and that is going to be The Truth About Heartbreak and The Truth About Tomorrow by B. Celeste. So this duet is just impeccable. I love it. So this one follows River and Everett and it is a brother's best friend trope which I love that trope and this one is just it's so good. The story is really well done. I really liked River a lot and Everett was a good character too. Um, I did get annoyed with him at certain points but River really pulled this one through for me. However, as much as I loved this one, I was not so sure about diving into the second book because it's a big age gap and I this was before I kind of have been desensitized to age gaps a bit and this is the truth about tomorrow I can't really talk too much about this one without spoiling what happens in this one so I am just going to kind of keep this as this is an amazing book I actually ended up liking it more than the truth about heartbreak I will just say have an open mind going into it I know it sounds wild um but it really is a beautiful story. I cried reading this one. I don't think I cried reading this one, but I definitely did reading this one. It's just, it's really beautiful. The romance is impeccable. I can't, I can't really say too much more about these without spoiling things and I really don't want to. So I'll just leave it at that to make sure that you check these out and B. Celeste's work in general. Um, I've read, I don't know, like maybe four or five of her books at this point and her writing is just phenomenal. The way she writes dialogue is a plus. Number eight, we're going to go with the book that has absolutely ruined me. I still think about this book every single day, and that is Forbidden by Tabitha Suzuma. I read this one for my band Forbidden Taboo Romance Reading Vlog, and besides the Off Balance series, this is my favorite book to come out of that vlog. It's just... What I'm telling you, again, you need to go into this with an open mind, you really do, but it's not icky. It is between Lachan and Maya, who are brother and sister, but they, their circumstances are just super shitty. Their dad left them and their mom is a single parent, but she does not parent at all. She's like basically run off with whichever new boyfriend she has and spends all their money. So it's basically up to Lachan and Maya to take care of their three younger siblings. And so they are both in high school, but they are parents. Like they're getting these kids off to school. They're helping with them with their homework. 
they're making sure that they're like field trip permission forms are signed. They are just really trying their best and trying to deal with the circumstances that they have been put into. And they are only like 11 months apart or something. So they said they've always grown up more as best friends than like brother and sister. And I think because of the dynamic in the family, it obviously leads to more. It is very YA though. So like, it's not graphic at all in the ending. We're not gonna talk about it because I'm still not over it. I cried so much after finishing this book, but it is just heartbreaking and beautiful. And I'll shut up about it. I already ranted for like nine minutes in my other reading vlog about it. So I'll just leave it at that. Go read this book. We're at number seven now, Sweet Dandelion by Michaela Smelter. It's between, Lo oh my God, wait, are they the same characters? Lachlan and this is Lachlan. Oh, this is between Lachlan and Danny, and Danny is a high school student who just moved in with her brother because at her last school there was a school shooting where her mother was killed because she was a staff member, and Danny was also shot. So she was in rehab for a while, relearning how to walk. So I believe she's 18 in this book, even though she's still in high school. So if that is something that bothers you with certain age gaps, like this one, she is technically of age when her and Lachlan start their relationship. And Lachlan is her guidance counselor who is assigned to her to just kind of talk to her every single day and try to help her through her trauma. And really the relationship with between them, it doesn't feel super student teachery. It really is more just like these two people connecting on a deeper level and him trying to help her through her trauma. I don't think I expected how deep this book would get and how much it would make me feel like Danny's pain and trauma is so visceral on the page and you really see her working through that bit by bit. I mean, this is a thick book or it's almost 600 pages. So you really get to get inside Danny's head and see the healing through in herself. It is just a really beautiful story just for Danny in general, but then also for Lachlan and Danny. I love their romance, so. This was definitely a standout for the year. So with these, I did try to limit my Penelope Douglas books because if I would have included them, I probably would have had like half of this list being Penelope Douglas. So, so I limited it to picking two of her works because I did read every single book that she has ever published this year. So she is my favorite author. I have two favorite author finds of the year and she is one of them. I'll talk about the other one later because I also included two of her works. So the first one from Penelope Douglas is Birthday Girl. And this is also the book that I discovered her off of. So this is about Jordan and Pike and Jordan and her boyfriend. She's 19, I think. And they're just like, they're going through it. They don't really have a lot of money. They don't really have a place to live. So Jordan and her boyfriend, I don't even remember the boyfriend's name. That's how like, I, that's how much I don't care about this man. They decided to move in with his dad, Pike. And from there, Jordan and Pike fall in love. So yes, she does fall in love with her boyfriend's dad, but there is no cheating in this. This is a slow burn, like slow burn. If you're not into that, I'm sorry, like this might not be for you, but I, I love a good slow burn. So I like that way more than Insta Love. I really liked Jordan a lot as a main character. She's very like no bullshit. She's going to do what she needs to do to get ahead in her life, but not in like stepping over other people. She's just like, I need to do what's best for me. And I have goals and I want to achieve them and she's going to do them. And I like that. And Pike definitely likes that too. And he's only like 38. So he had her, boy her boyfriend, when he was pretty young. So it's not like, it's a big age gap. But again, like I said, I'm kind of desensitized at this point that it's not super big, but it was just a lot of fun. I think it's still, out of all Penelope Douglas's work, my favorite, it's for sure my favorite standalone of hers. So I'm happy that I have this limited edition version of it and that's signed by her. Like, I just love it. Okay, coming in at number five is actually the only book series that has made my list that I don't own physical copies of and that is the Off Balance series by Lucia Franco. I own all of them on my Kindle so I read the first book for my Banned Forbidden Taboo reading vlog and after that I was like I need to read the rest of the series and then shortly after I started reading the rest Balance got banned again off of Amazon which I think is ridiculous. I feel really bad for Lucia Franco. This series like I don't get why people report books. It's like if you don't like it then just don't read it. 
So Amazon does not sell the paperback of Bounce anymore. And I think they sell the paperbacks of the other four books, but I don't want to buy them from Amazon because they keep banning it. I'm going to wait for Lucia Franco to restock her store and purchase them from her so that way she gets like sold profits or at least gets the majority of the profits. I'm not buying them from Amazon. So I'll wait until she does a restock and then I will be buying these all. This series follows Rhea and Kova. Rhea is a gymnast. Again, this has a significant age gap and there is cheating in this and she is underage for part of their relationship. Honestly, there's not a lot that can surprise me at this point in reading books, and I personally loved every second of this series. It's five books all following Rhea and Kova. I loved following a couple for that long. I have an entire vlog up where I read the last four books in this, so for more of my thoughts, you def can definitely go and check that out. I loved Rhea as a main character. She's such a badass. To see her from page one have a goal and never see her waver from that, even with her relationship going on with Kova, is awesome. Kova too, oh my god. I love it. Their relationship is I think one of my favorite relationships I've read this entire year. It's just I can't stop thinking about them. I love the gymnastics part. If you aren't into sports romance, I don't know if you'd like it. It is really gymnastics heavy, but me personally, I love gymnastics. I don't know anything about gymnastics, but I think it's really fun to read about. And the meets were like my favorite things. As much as I loved Rhea and Kova just as like boyfriend-girlfriend relationship, I loved seeing them as coach and athlete. I think that is where they really shined, especially at the meets. I'll shut up about this book, the series. So number four is The Devil's Night series, again by Penelope Douglas. It was kind of my introduction to dark romance and I ate it up. I mean, but it's not even that dark, it's kind of dark. So it consists of four books. This is a novella right here, Conclave, and then actually Fire Night just came out. So I already read that, I did like that. I'll be talking about that in my December wrap ups. Again, just Penelope Douglas honestly can do no wrong in my opinion. I don't even need to see a synopsis of what she's writing if she released a book on buying it and I'm reading it. Like I genuinely don't even need to know. I can go and completely buy and know that I will probably at least really like it. It does consist, this is uh, a series about the four horsemen who basically every year on Devil's Night, they just kind of do whatever they want around the town. And one Devil's Night, they are, three of them are arrested and then Corrupt is where we kick off where three of the horsemen just got out of jail and they're kind of out for their revenge. So this one follows Micah and Reek, Micah, Michael and Rika. This actually is my least favorite of the three, even though it is the first book. Um, I do really like it still, but I just think Michael and Rika overall were not my... they weren't my favorite couple. The best thing about this series is that each book does an incredible job of setting up the horseman for the next book. So this book does a great job setting up Kai in Hideaway. So this one follows Kai and Banks, and I think this is my favorite book out of the series. It is the second book, and this one does a great job setting up Damon. I never thought that I would get around to liking Damon. Everyone was like, Killswitch is the best book in the series. You're gonna absolutely love it. Damon is amazing. And I was like, Damon is trash. Leave it to Penelope Douglas to redeem this man. And I was like, I'm all in on Damon. So this one follows Damon in winter. And I, this is a close second. I really loved this book. And I really liked winter because to be a match with Damon, is a tough job to have. And also she is blind, so it is really interesting to hear, um, the, or to read the chapters from her point of view and just the way that she views the world and everything. It's so cool and it's something really different that I hadn't read up until this point. I've never read a book with a blind main character and point of view, so that was awesome. And then Conclave is just a little novella to go in between Kill Switch and the last book, Nightfall. Nightfall just came out this year. This is Will's book. Kill Switch does a great job at setting up Will, which is Nightfall. And I was really, really looking forward to this one because Will was actually my favorite horseman kind of throughout the rest of the books. I just thought that he seemed just like a lost little puppy dog a bit. And this book was a different will than what I was expecting, but I think it wrapped everything up really well. I mean, this series had so many twists and turns in it. Like as much as it is a romance, it really is like a suspense thriller mystery series too. So if that's something that you're interested in, I would definitely check this out. The romance is top notch and so is the like twists and turns. And Nightfall did a great job wrapping up those loose ends, but it also the epilogue in this, 
I want more content. I want to see about the Horseman's Children, so I would love to see more of that. And in my personal opinion, I think it's Penelope Douglas's best work. Why is there hair stuck to these? That's disgusting. Number three is the Off Campus series by Al Kennedy. The Deal was the very first book that I read of 2020. These are so much fun. Again, they were an introduction to Al Kennedy for me, which is another great author find for me. So this series follows a group of college students. Each one is a different hockey player who are all roommates at this college, this made up college. And each one is their romance and it's so cute. My favorite thing about this series is the friendship dynamic between these four guys and then that the girls create. It's it's just really lighthearted. I think out of everything, pretty much all of the books are like pretty heavy that I've read or have some like pretty serious things in them. And these do tackle certain serious topics. Like the first one it does tackle sexual assault. So if that is something that um, is a trigger for you, just be noted about that. But the rest of the books does not deal with that. So they do tackle serious subjects, but for the most part, they're really like lighthearted and just fun. They're just fun, easy reads. So the deal follows Hannah and Garrett and Garrett is the team captain. And this one is like just slightly in second place, only to be beaten by the mistake, which is Logan and Grace's book. And this is everyone's least favorite book in the series. And I really think people are missing out on my man, Logan. I love this one. I don't know why everyone does not like it. So these two are like almost tied, but Mistake just wins by a little bit. So again, like with the Devil's Night series, this book does a great job of setting up Logan. Then we have the score, which again, in the previous books, you do start to see Dean a bit. And this is everyone's favorite. I'd put it at number three. Um, this is Dean and Allie, and Allie is Hannah's best friend from the first book. So again, we're getting just like people in the same friend group. And then lastly, we have Tucker and Sabrina. This one is my least favorite, but I still do really love it. And this one, so the first three are just like kind of regular romances and this one does have an accidental pregnancy trope. So if that's something that you like, you don't necessarily have to read the rest of the books. Like they all kind of are standalones within a series, but I would definitely recommend them. Like they're all really fun. Okay, number two, I'm gonna have a hard time trying to fit these all, but number two is going to be the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Moss. I already did two reading vlogs on the series where I read this for the first time and vlogged my entire experience. And I'm very glad that I did because there were a lot of what the fuck moments that I'm glad that I now have captured forever. So you can go and check those out for like in-depth thoughts on each book. It really is like as much as it's like a fantasy series, there is romance in it, which honestly, if a book doesn't have romance in it, like I kind of don't want it. Actually not, I kind of don't want it, like I don't want it. And this has the perfect balance of fantasy, world building, character development, and romance. So I really can't ask for any more. It's eight books and seven of them follow our main character, Selena slash Aelin. The amount of character development that Selena and Aelin, Selena slash Aelin goes through in these books is mind blowing. I think she's probably my favorite character that I have read to come out of 2020. There are so many great characters in these because there are so many books. There are a lot of people and times to explore. My least favorite is Assassin's Blade. It's like the prequel novel. I'm not a huge fan of those. Followed by Throne of Glass. I'd put that at number seven. Crown of Midnight at number six. Air of Fire at number five. Tower of Dawn at number four, even though I absolutely loved this and I love Kale. So if you don't like Kale, that's fine. I respect your opinion, but I'm a Kale girl, so I did love this one. And then number three would be Queen of Shadows. Number two would be Kingdom of Ash. And my favorite one of, out of the whole series is Empire of Storms. This is book number five. This book is nonstop goodness. Like it's just, it's perfection. If you are like trying to get into fantasy, if you're like a romance reader and are trying to get into fantasy, I would really suggest checking out this series. And I'm gonna have one other I'm gonna talk about. This series was just incredible. And again, I have not stopped thinking about it. That's kind of a common theme. If I have not stopped thinking about these books, then I know that they belong on my top list. And every single one of these books is one that I still think about on the regular. Before I get into my number one, I have four honorable mentions. First is gonna be The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. This book was just so fun. I love enemies to lovers. I loved it. I cannot wait for the movie adaptation. Then The Unrequited by Saffron Kent. Saffron Kent is a pretty hit or miss author for me, but this in Medicine Man, 
Mm -hmm. So good. This is Layla and Thomas. It's a student teacher, but it's kind of stalkerish. It's incredible. I don't own physical copies of these, but Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. Absolutely incredible. Definitely shed a couple of tears reading this. And I also read it like right before the election, so it was just kind of, it was kind of perfectly timed. And then The Him and Us Duet by Elle Kennedy and Serena Bowen. It feels very like off-campus vibes because it's obviously by the same author, just with another person involved. But it's hockey, but it's a male-male romance, and it is, it's basically just the off-campus series by the male-male out of college. And it's everything that I wanted, and I love a duet. I love getting two books with a couple because I just like spending time with them and seeing the trials that they go through. So perfection. Okay, so the number one end all be all read of 2020 for me was the Hort of Thorns and Roses series by Sarah J Maas. So this was the first series that I read. She also wrote Throne of Glass. So that's why I just had to put this one at number one because it was my introduction to her. And besides um, Penelope Douglas and Al Kennedy, Sarah J Maas is my favorite writer that I found this year. This series follows one protagonist, Feyre, and I don't really want to spoil anything, so I won't really say, I guess, like the other person. But anyways, it's a fantasy romance series. The world building in this series is like incredible. The romance is top notch. Honestly, like this series in my mind, I don't really think I have too many complaints, except that th we are going to be getting spin-offs books. And looking ahead to 2021, one of my most anticipated read is A Court of Silver Flames, which is going to be following Cassian and Nesta from this series, which I am so excited for. And we're supposed to be getting a few more spinoff books. So I'm really hoping for an Asriel book and I'm hoping for a more book. More needs a happy ending and I just want the same for Asriel, so. So this one follows Feyre as she is a human and then she's taken into this fairy realm. And again, when you hear fairy, like, I thought of like Tinkerbell before I started reading fantasy books. No, we are not talking those kind of fairies. And I couldn't be more pleased. <laughs> Feyre, I feel like is a really underrated heroine. She isn't afraid to accept help from other people. And I think that's just as important of a lesson to learn as it is to like do it yourself. Out of this series, my least favorite is A Court of Frost and Starlight. It's basically like a long novella and it just kind of sets up Silver Flames a bit. So it's fine, but not the best. Then I would put A Court of Thorns and Roses. This one, if you've read the series, you know why this is probably your least favorite as well, but it's still amazing, a great introduction. And then the bread and butter of this series, which are Wings and Ruin and Mist and Fury. Honestly, I have such a hard time picking between the two, but I would put Wings and Ruin just a little bit higher at number one and Mist and Fury at number two, even though Mist and Fury is like everyone's favorite. And it is incredible. This book is game changing for this series in so many ways but there's just something about Wings and Ruin that just does it for me. This series was just a great introduction for me into getting back into fantasy books. I wasn't really into them for a while and since then I've been like getting myself back in the genre again. Really these books, I've read them twice this year and I'm gonna be doing a reading vlog on them before Silver Flames comes out and genuinely they just they made me happy this year. Okay so that was all of my read or my top 10 reads of 2020. Um, I'll have my final count of reads in my December wrap-ups. I am filming this like halfway through December, but I really don't see anything that I read bumping anything off of this list. So if you're looking for something new, you know, maybe check out one of these because I would hope that they could bring you as much joy as they brought me. Looking into 2021, like I said, I'm really looking forward to A Court of Silver Flames. I'm looking forward to Penelope Douglas's new series, The Hellbent series, going off of the Fall Away series, the spinoff there. I'm very excited for that. I'm excited for the third book in the From Blood and Ash series by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I hope that you had something in 2020 that brought you joy, how reading brought me joy. So let's hope for a better 2021, but otherwise, at least the only thing that I know in 2021 is that I'll have some good books to be reading. And if that's the only certainty I have in my life right now, then I guess I'll take it. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know what your top 10 books of 2020 were because I'm always looking for new books to be reading. And I hope everyone has a great rest of 2020.